talk about spring and um, we're going to talk about the March chapter of the Vintage Notions book. We are going to go back and actually in that chapter we have some things about monograms. So we're going to be talking about monograms. Hi Sherry. Everybody let me know where you're watching from. Please do. Please say hello. You know why? Because the more, I mean, the commenting is what um, I really appreciate when I do these lives. And we're going to have a giveaway today. And that giveaway is going to be um, a really fun palette of Sulky 12 weight Crossroads thread. So um, I'd shared with you that when we did our embroidery segment about the Crossroads thread from Sulky, when I talked about um, embroidery in my Folk Art Motifs book last week, and I shared the Sulky Stick and Stitch um, and mentioned the 12 weight is really, really nice for embroidery. So I'm giving away six spools of the 12 weight thread today. So you can look forward to that. So something different. Thread. Everybody needs more thread, right? You cannot, just like fabric, can never, never have enough. Well, we're going to start out. So I think everybody, there's Jean who's on and Sherry. Excellent. We're going to get started here. So first of all, I just want to talk to you about yesterday. Um, I went on a walk and I saw my first spring, spring flower and it was a crocus. Um, so many of you uh, know that I have this amazing collection of vintage artwork and ephemera. Uh, and I, today as I was looking into my collection for the event, I found this really gorgeous little trade card of a crocus. So I wanted to share it after I'd seen the, the crocus I saw in my neighborhood was a little yellow crocus, but I did see the daffodils popping out of the ground too. So we're all happy spring is almost here in Kansas City. And I hope wherever you are, you might be seeing some signs of spring too. So here we go. I'm going to put this up a little closer and then I'm going to tell you about what's on the back. Um, this is a, was it what you call a premium and this would be found in an Arm & Hammer baking soda box. So there was a whole collection of beautiful flowers that you could, could um, find. And I have one more that was in, in the collection that I thought, just so you'd see another, another example. But aren't those gorgeous? I just love the beauty in these. And so I know we're all looking forward to flowers. Um, and there's Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Looks like we're getting more people on. Really appreciate you guys watching live. So thanks for being here. And remember to comment. Again, the prize, I'll repeat it, is six spools of Sulky Crossroads Colors thread. So, um, so back to flowers. And you know, I like to have fresh flowers in the um, frame for you. Well, no fresh flowers today. We're going to go with flowers made from pattern tissue. How much fun is that? Of course, I still have my mother of pearl buttons in the bottom. Uh, but this, I just think is, and just using, these are just sticks from the yard. Um, but making these flowers much similar, similar to what crepe paper was back, back years ago. And the popularity of crepe paper was huge. In fact, in the Women's Institute publications, whenever they had parties at the school, they would always decorate with crepe paper in beautiful, you know, array of colors, whether it be for, um, you know, patriotic season or, you know, Washington's birthday, they would create an, a tablescape with crepe paper. So anyway, I thought we'll have flowers. They just won't be um, fresh today. They're, they're vintage. Um, so you might try this. I mean, how many of us have boxes full of pattern tissue that we could create a little bouquet for ourselves? So I'm, um, 
I'm, it's interesting, you guys, I'm looking at he, here at my phone, but then over here, I have the feed that I mentioned where I'm trying to look at, at um, your comments too. So I'm going to peek over there and see what I'm seeing. Um, Cindy, I see Cindy's here from Eastern Iowa. Awesome. And we've got Beth from Charlotte, North Carolina. And somebody, Dawn said she likes my pretty flowers. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. Next on my list is the Vintage Notions book. And talking about the chapter March. Um, and I think if, if some of you may have... Um, seen my blog post this morning. So uh, hopefully all of you are signed up for my newsletter and receive that regularly. In the newsletter, I mentioned that I have a new blog post up. And in that blog post, I do a little, what I call a little Vintage Notions book club theme, which is actually reviewing some of the Women's Institute content. And I usually review one of the um, monthly magazines as well as sometimes material from the Vintage Notions book. And you'll see a video actually in the blog post too if you wanna watch a, a little more in depth about the book in the month of March. So here is what I, we're talking about today, which is monograms. And there's a really nice article in the book that talks about all sorts of details about monograms, how to to place the letters depending on, um, you know, whether your, um, how your maiden name might go or your married name, uh, the different styles of lettering that people used, uh, the placements. So I'm going to show you that. And I do have, I think, let's see where my monogrammed hankies are. I think I left them over on the ironing board. So I'm going to, Michelle's going to help me out maybe to see if she can find those monograms so I can show you some actual hankies that have been monogrammed, right? Um, and then the fun thing is right now I'll tell you about, we have a free printable for monograms that you can find on amyberrickman.com. Okay. There's Lauren. Laureen, nice to see you. Um, and so we have a PDF that you can print that has um, all of the different letters on it. I'm going to show you this so you can see kind of the style of the lettering. And so there's an entire um, PDF that has the whole alphabet for you to look at a, to, and you can print it on the sulky stick and stitch. Oh, I found it. It was right under the stick and stitch. <laughs> Getting ready for these lives is a lot of fun. And there's a lot I, I'm, I want to share. And sometimes, sometimes I misplace things here and there along the way. In fact, the one thing I've misplaced is these beautiful vintage hankies that I want to share with you, but, um, we will, we will track them down before the end it might be at the end of the, the half hour that we're doing this. So this, Oh, look where they are right on top. I found them. <laughs> they were on my mannequin. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, thanks, Michelle. There we go. Okay. Back to the printable. So this printable is available at for free on amyberkman.com under free printables. It's the first tab in the drop down that you'll see. So what we've done, lucky for me that A, B are my initials, right? That were right here. So we cut those off. We print it on stick and stitch and then we cut out my A, B and what we're doing is just a satin stitch. Um, and what one tip that you, I'll tell you about using the stick and stitch is always remember you will want to go up through your fabric all the way and back down. You won't want to um, kind of do the shortcut where you're going up and down in one movement or one stitch. You'll want to definitely go through 
break through the, the thin interfacing and then come back down. So that is where, where did I get the inspiration for this? Um, I got it right here. Whoops. Can I turn it the right way? So this is a fun, this is in my vintage collection. Of course, Amy, Amy Berkman, AB. Um, it's a wonderful feather linen pillow. So I thought we would go ahead and try to re reproduce this design, vintage made modern, right? Um, and so I wanted you to see that. And actually, speaking of roses, um, I'm gonna loop back to, oops, drop some thread. Um, I'm gonna, I'm jumping all over kind of today, so um, hopefully that's okay with you guys. Um, I'm gonna show you the roses in the, in the um, spring chapter of the Vintage Notions book. Um, so there is a article. Again, I said, you know, the March, never got into talking about, the theme of March is cheerfulness. That cheerfulness is to be more valued than riches is Mary Brooks Pickens' advice. So I hope you guys agree with that, I do. Um, and that's the opening quote you can see here. And you can see the hanky that we have, this fun vintage textile that um, accents this page. But later in the chapter, well, I'll just flip you through. There's another. Everybody's getting ready for thinking ahead to Easter lilies. But this is another fun, fun little graphic in the book. Inspiration Department, Roses Every Day. So when I saw that rose embroidery, I thought about the quote in here. Let's give the roses every day. A petal of cheer now is worth a dozen roses after a while. So the idea being, if you care for somebody or you want to give somebody a positive, you know, cheerful greeting, do it today. Don't wait. You know, today's the day. Re do something friendly and kind. Don't wait till tomorrow, right? Roses every day. One rose today is worth more than a dozen later on. So there's Mary Brooks Pickin talking to us. And boy, we appreciate her wisdom. So back, I have them for you. Here are those hankies I mentioned. Um, this one with the A, I think is pretty fun, black and white. Um, and I wanted to show you too the M that I, I you might have, seen me post this one on, I posted this on Facebook this morning to tell, tell everybody what I was going to be talking about. And the fact it's M for March. And um, that has just a real pretty little detail on it, doesn't it? So that is our, those were a couple of the monograms. One more I'll show. Um, this is a beautiful, just white on white monogram of the E. You can see that, love that too. So we've talked about monograms. You know our giveaway is going to be the thread. So all of you commenting are entering to win six spools of the Petite's thread and the Crossroads color collection that I had put together. And there's just some beautiful collections if you go to the sulky site that you'll see when you look at the crossroads collection um also since it's march i thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about saint patrick's day and show you some of the artwork and there's barbara carlson hello barbara um so show you some of the artwork that's on amyberrickman.com and i have to say this might be one of my favorite images um that we in the library right now, in the image library. And this little four leaf um, clover girl is actually, we she is on some bark cloth. Um, these darling little pantaloons with bark cloth. So you can see how you can combine the vintage photos work really well when you combine them or applique them on bark cloth. 
And I love, I just love her. I think she'd be fun if we stitched her. We also have the teeny weeny little baby rickrack around her as a little frame. So I wanted to share her. So she, you keep in mind what my ideal was, would be that maybe you would take and, you know, this image is for sale. It, it, it is for sale on the site. Um, and maybe you would print this and you would add a backing of a postcard and you could actually mail her, um, whether you print her on paper or you print her on fabric and choose to embellish her with thread, but you can mail fabric postcards and how much fun to share a St. Pat's greeting of, you know, friendship and good luck. Um, I did wanna show you one image that we do have, a little St. Pat is that we have for free. So this image, uh, the wearing of the green, and you can see her bonnet and her, we'll call it her, um, her frock for St. Patty's Day, and she's carrying a little clover in her hand. And then another um, graphic we have that I really thought was cool too um, is this, uh, Aaron. Yes, Aaron, that's Erin, and it's she says St. Patrick's Day greetings. You can see that she's holding a three-leafed clover. And this was these are vintage postcards from my collection that have been scanned and cleaned, so they're very nice quality once you print them. Um, and you know, you can you can make them smaller and make them, you know, gift tags if you wanted, and then that PDF of the postcards that we sell has them little smaller graphics too, so you can match them up. So you have plenty of time. I'm talking about this early enough that you could make some friends, some St. Patrick's Day greetings using our graphics from the website. Again, the if you wanna shop for and see those images, you can just type in amyberrickman.com forward slash shop and then search Clover and you'll find these images will, will pop up for you. And- I posted the link. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Michelle posted the link for you guys to make it even easier for you to find what we have because we do have a lot of variety and some many images out there for you to use on the website. Sewing ephemera, you know, a wide variety of things. In fact, Last week, we talked about, um, excuse me, two weeks ago. Was it last week or two weeks ago we did needle cases? It's a couple weeks. Yeah. So I thought um, I'm going to quick show you a new needle case that, that I, that, look, we've got mail to open. We've got mail. That's it. Maybe that'll be our new, um, <laughs> just like uh, Mr. Rogers, different. <laughs> Yeah, Blue's Clues. <laughs> We've got me. Oh, that was it. Not Michelle, you're Blue's Clues age. <laughs> I'm Mr. Rogers age. Okay. I don't know how many of you are Mr. Rogers age, but that's me. So here, here's a fun um, needle case that showed up thanks to the mailman. How much fun is it to, find, to receive treasures in the mail? So um, there you can see the ladies uh, having a nice afternoon of let's see on this side they're having their tea and you can see she's holding her needle click case right on this side they're actually embroidering they're they're not they're they're embroidering they're just not drinking and having ladies lunch out but um anyway i thought you guys had fun seeing a new treasure in my collection and again keep commenting you guys and saying hello tell it tell me where you're from you've jumped on recently we have a giveaway of um, some beautiful colors of sulky thread I can't guarantee these are the exact colors but I promise you there'll be six really nice colors to work with and one really good green since we've been talking about green um, and it's March seems like the month to, to and I did want to show you remember we talked to we did have the Piccadilly um, needle case when I did the needle case live event. So if you are watching and you haven't seen my previous lives events, you might go back and, and watch 
this is a fun um, way to use one of our graphics and create, um, you know, a really fun, you can see how the ribbon was used not only as like the binding, um, but then tied um, to tie this. And this is, um, we just added felt in here, just felt is what you'll see. And then we have um, like a vinyl or like a, oh, um, iron-on laminate, lamination that you can do. So think about laminating, but then we actually stitched through the lamination. So this might be a project that we'll, we'll do more with. Maybe we'll do a little tutorial one of these days on making one of these. Um, I also wanted to remember, tell you about what was in the March of the Vintage Notion monthly issues. So in Vintage Notions Monthly, we have um, the third issue that was a March collection of content and also the 15th issue that was March. And I, f just for fun, I thought I'd show you um, a couple articles. I particularly thought this, you know, there's a lot about millinery in the um, Women's Institute material because one of their courses was in hat making, which is millinery. And this particular, look at those hats. And one of them actually talks about using mother of pearl buttons on the hat. So I thought that made this page kind of extra special. And it says fabric dominates spring millinery. So at this point, many of the hats were being made. Oh, and look at the cover. How about that, a hat box? So um, yeah, at that time, fabric was a popular material for making hats. And then, so this is issue, um, this is issue 15, and then this is issue three. And again, look at the, I love sharing these gorgeous illustrations. And every time I look at them, I see something different. Like when I looked at this recently, I had never noticed this like the scarf hang, hanging here on the chair. So let's see what I found in this issue. Talking about frocks for the first warm days. And what I loved about this article is it all, it talked about gingham and how popular gingham was back in, you know, we're talking 1922. So, and gingham is still popular. It's one of those timeless fabrics that we can wear and enjoy, um, you know, throughout the seasons, particularly in the spring and summer, it's ideal. So I will tell you these issues are available on the website under shop. There's a category called Vintage Notions Monthly and those um, you'll find the issues there as PDFs that you can download if you want to read them on your device. If you want a printed copy like you see here, the printed copies are available on Amazon. And at, on my homepage, we have a new homepage on the website, so take a look at it, amyberrickman.com. If you go to the top navigation, you'll see something called Amazon shop and that is where you can link over to all of the publications books and magazines that are available in print on amazon so that if you're looking for for instance the vintage notions book you would find that there and you could order it there um so and you know one more thing that i remembered about monograms in this chapter in march in, at the end of each chapter, there are testimonials from students who took this course. And these students actually um, tell their story. And so one of the um, testimonials at the end of March talk, is from a monogram specialist. And so this woman's business is monogramming and it explains how she's had such a success in her monogram business. And that just reminded me of what is happening today 
And with all of the digital cutting, cutting machines and the ability, ability for custom made um, personalized gifts on like say Etsy, I think we've come full circle for this popularity and personalization and monogramming. So I hope you'll enjoy that free printable I shared that you can make your own monograms um, and embroidery, embroider. And you know, if you end up winning the thread, you'll you'll be set to to personalize some linens or a gift for somebody. So um, we're gonna pick a winner here. Are we about at the point to pick, Michelle? Yes, so. Okay, so we're gonna pick a winner, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we're gonna do next week here on the live event. Okay, let's see. Michelle is looking through all those comments. We appreciate the comments and you know, you can only win if you're in the live event. So please join us live when you can. And it is Sharon Noble, N-O-B-L-E, Sharon, you are the winner today. So congratulations. And if you can email your address to info at amybarrickman.com or DM us on Facebook with your information. So either or, info at amybarrickman.com or um, message me through the Facebook Messenger app. Michelle, do you think I missed anything else here today or did I cover everything cover that we... Everything. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and sh talk a little bit about what's gonna happen next week. So. It's National Quilting Month. I'm not sure how many of you know that. If you do, um, let me know you know it. And yes, National Quilting Month. Let's do some quilting and talk about quilting. So next week, uh, I'm going to have a special guest. And that special guest is Donna Martin. May may maybe you've heard that name or you maybe you've heard me talk about my mom. And Donna is going to talk about, she has some wonderful crazy quilts in her collection. And I, I'm just going to show you one little preview of a crazy quilt pillow that I had in my collection that I think is kind of cool. Um, it has this wonderful embroidery. It says mother right there. And since my mom's coming next week with crazy quilting, how perfect is this? I didn't even plan that, but it's working out just Splendidly. So this, is this not a splendid piece of, of patchwork of crazy quilt? I, I love the color. I love the stitching. There's several little embroidered um, flowers on it. I'll give you one more kind of fun up close look at that. Gorgeous. So be here next week. Tell your friends, please. Um, invite people into the group that you know, the more the merrier. You're, you can easily go through and just tell your friends and invite them to the group and they'll automatically be able to join. So please share the, share how much fun you're having watching and their prizes to win too. So, and again, um, have a great weekend. Enjoy beautiful weather. I hope it's Gorgeous where you're going to be and the sun's going to be shining. Thanks a lot for being here and we'll see you next week. One o'clock central, the Vintage Made Modern Facebook group. And if those of you who are watching this from YouTube, I do post this later on YouTube. So I'll tell those watchers if they enjoyed the video to give us a thumbs up or comment please comment and let us know if you see something you like or you have a question. We're happy to try to answer. Thanks again. Bye, everybody.